The goal of an abusive person is to maintain control. And one of the most effective ways to maintain control is to control your mind and your heart and your emotions and even your soul. I've talked to quite a few survivors of abuse and many of them tell me that they felt like when they were in that abusive relationship, they were going crazy. This is often called gaslighting from the 1944 movie Gaslight, where the abuser tries to make his wife feel like she's going crazy by continuing to change the storyline. Well, if you're in that kind of relationship, you need some help to remap your brain. Your, your body and your brain has been trained to think distorted thoughts. And so it's important to go see a good counselor and therapist to help you remap your brain and create new neurological pathways based on the truth. In the same way, um, if you're a Christian, an abusive person will very often use the scriptures to try to control your heart and your spirit. They will distort scriptures, kind of like what the devil did when he was tempting Jesus, that he would take a, a verse of scripture and rip it out of context and use it as a tool of shame and guilt and control. And very often that's what an abuser will do. And so it's important that you speak to a good Christian counselor or a pastor who's trained in, in understanding some of these power dynamics and what goes on in an abusive relationship. Now, over the years, as I've talked to survivors, I've noticed that, that abusive people have a few favorite Bible passages that they love to use to try to maintain control over their victim. And so I'm going to walk through a few common passages and show you the greater context and the real truth of Scripture. For example, very often, an abusive person will use a verse from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, wives submit to your husbands. They'll say something like, see, the Bible says you have to submit to me and you're sinning. You're not being a good wife unless you submit to me. Well, when you read the larger context of that verse, you read the verse right before that one, it says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And so both husbands and wives are supposed to submit to one another. That means the husband is to submit to his wife. He is to lay down his life for his wife. Paul says that a husband is to look at his wife as if she's perfect and clean and without blemish or stain or wrinkle or without any kind of sin and to be that kind of devoted husband, not to demand submission. Another verse that seems to be a favorite of abusive people comes from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 10 and 11. It says this, A wife must not separate from her husband, but if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and a husband must not divorce his wife. And so, very often, an abusive person will say, See, you can't separate from me. You can't divorce me. In fact, if you do, you'll never marry again. Ripping that passage out of scripture, uh, out of context, in order to maintain control. Because if you would just read a few verses later, you'll see what Paul says next. He says, but if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. An abusive person is certainly acting like an unbeliever. They're abandoning their marriage vows, and you are not bound in such circumstances, according to the Apostle Paul. He says, God has called us to live in peace. And one more verse. Very often I've heard that abusive people love to use Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, where Jesus is talking about forgiveness. And, and he's asked, how many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? And Jesus says, not just seven times, but up to 77 times. And so the abusive person will say something like, see, you have to forgive me. Why do you keep bringing up the past? Why do you keep uh, talking about what happened before? Forgive and forget, move on. You're not being a good Christian. Well, when you look at the larger context of this section of scripture, um, yes, Jesus does want us to forgive, but he's talking about forgiving a person who's truly repentant, somebody who repents and wants to change and amend their ways. And not only that, when you look at the even larger context, when you look at the beginning of chapter 18, he says that it's better for a person 
who harms one of these ones that, that God loves, harms their victim. It's better for that kind of abusive person to have a millstone tied around their neck and to be drowned in the heart of the sea than to harm one of these people that God loves. In fact, Jesus goes on to say that if a person is abusing one of God's people, that person needs to be confronted uh, not just by an individual, but confronted by the whole church. And if they will not repent and change, that kind of abusive person should be treated as an outsider and ignored. You see, when you look at scripture in the wider context, it should never be used as a tool to create fear and guilt and shame by an abusive person. So I know this is really challenging, uh, but if you've been in an abusive relationship, your mind and your heart and your spirit has been trained to believe lies. And so go see a good therapist, a good Christian counselor, and, and a pastor who can help you remap your brain according to the truth. And as Jesus says, it's the truth that will set you free. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that you would put wise counselors and pastors and Christian leaders in the lives of all those who've been victims of abuse. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us all remap our brains and our hearts and our spirits according to your truth. And through that truth, set us all free. In your name we pray, amen. If you or someone you know is suffering from abuse, there is help. Please visit our resources at timeofgrace.org slash abuse. Hey everyone, Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Hey, thanks so much for taking your time to listen to this message. We would love so many other people to hear about this message too. So if you could think of someone in your mind right now that could use this, we would love for you just to take a moment and share it. Um, that's essentially how people hear the good news of Jesus, believe it, and find eternal life in his name. Thanks for sharing and have a great day.